To go to a broader picture of things, let's look at the efferent pathways of the heart that bring electrical signals to the myocytes. There are three different types of these autonomic signaling pathways that act to regulate the heart. One is parasympathetic and the other two are sympathetic pathways. Remember that acetylcholine is released to bind to the muscarinic receptors on the heart in the parasympathetic. Norepinephrine is released from the sympathetic pathway to bind to the beta-1 adrenergic, adrenergic receptors. And epinephrine is released from the adrenal gland and travels through the bloodstream to bind to both beta-1 and beta-2 adrenergic receptors in another sympathetic pathway. Zooming in for a closer look, let's talk about the effects of epinephrine and norepinephrine in the sympathetic stimulation of the ventricle. The hormone binds to an adrenergic receptor which is coupled with a G protein. Part of the G protein splits off and helps stimulate the cell permeability to chloride ion. The rest of the G protein will interact with the adenylocyclase to create cyclic AMP from ATP. CAMP will then activate protein kinase A. PKA will use phosphorylation to increase the activity of different ion pumps and channels in the cell. It stimulates the entering of calcium into the cell through L-type voltage-operated calcium channels. It phosphorylates the ryanidine receptor to stimulate the release of calcium, and it also phosphorylates the calcium ATPase inhibitor, phospholamban, so that it loses its inhibitory ability and the ATPase can increase the rate at which calcium enters the SR. This all increases the rate at which the cell can contract during a fight or fly response. Now that we have looked at the sympathetic response in normal cardiac cells, let's look at the sympathetic response in the SA node. I'll begin by explaining what a normal action potential in the SA node looks like and then compare it to how it looks during a sympathetic response. When the cell membrane is negative 60 millivolts, the IF channels, called funny channels, open, making the membrane permeable to both sodium and potassium. An influx of sodium enters the cell. Then some calcium channels open, and later more open, to continue to depolarize the cell as calcium enters. The calcium channels close as the potassium channels open, and the exiting of potassium causes the cell to repolarize. After the cell is hyperpolarized, the potassium channels close and the funny channels open again. These funny channels are what allow the cells to be autorhythmic rather than waiting for an outside signal to reach threshold. When cyclic AMP is increased inside these pacemaker cells due to a sympathetic response, it increases the probability that the funny channels will open. The slope of the depolarization caused by the funny channel steepens and the heart rate increases. Taking a closer look inside the cell during sympathetic stimulation, we see that there is a similar but different response from the regular cardiomyocytes. When the hormone binds, the G-coupled receptor begins to have an inhibitory effect on some potassium channels. The G protein interacts with the adenylocyclase to create CAMP, and this will directly increase the funny channel activity to speed up the depolarization of the cell. It also stimulates pKa activity, which will in turn increase calcium permeability in the cell. In summary, the slope of depolarization is increased due to activation of the funny channel by CAMP. The lowest po point of the action potential is higher due to the decreased potassium conductance, and the threshold for the calcium channel is less positive due to pKa phosphorylation of the calcium channel. So the result is that the threshold for the action potential is reached faster so that the heart rate can increase. Briefly, I'll discuss the parasympathetic stimulation of the heart. Activation of the muscarinic receptor in the pacemaker cells decreases the level of camp. The depolarization slope is less steep because the funny channels do not open as quickly. Therefore, the heart rate decreases. In this parasympathetic response, the slope of the depolarization is decreased and the lowest point of the action potential is lower due to the increased potassium conductance. The threshold for the calcium channel is more positive due to decreased pKa phosphorylation of the calcium channel and therefore the net result is that the threshold for the action potential is reached lower and the heart rate dec decreases. And that pretty much sums up an overall picture of cardiovascular regulation.